Why do you think the Leafs can't beat the Bruins? Well, you know... Well, you know what I think. Go ahead. Mark Frazier fighting Adam McQuaid is fine, but he's got to go after bigger fish. Go after Sean Thornton. The Bruins might just be better. Komarov and Marshan need to have, like, a super pass fight. Well, that could be better. And I want to see Frazier McLaren on stilts against the Daniel Char. Pretty sure they're just better. You know what it really amped the Leafs up is a goalie fight. No Tim Thomas, though. Ah, oh, stupid Democrats. Look at him! Finally! Go, Canadian fire! Country! Yeah. Deal with it. Deal on smash! Owen Rubowski. GTFO. <laughs> I got it from a bar. <laughs> Leafs lose 4-2 to the Boston Bruins. Tyler Sagan scores an empty netter, of course he does, with like no time left on the clock, so really the Leafs lost a one goal game by two. And Leafs fans, I think we can agree that uh, the Leafs are improving against Boston. The games are watchable now. And it's just amazing to me that I heard during the pregame, the Leafs haven't won in Boston since March of 2011. I was there getting called many nasty things. Actually, story from that I don't think I ever said in the video. This guy in a Bruins jersey bumped into me at a bar and he goes, ah, oh, sorry. Then he looked down at my Leafs jersey and said, pfft, not sorry. But is it weird though that somehow I think this loss was almost a good thing for the Leafs? People are always saying, ah, oh, you gotta play tough against Boston. You gotta find a way to stand up to the Bruins. Well, with the roster the Leafs have right now, they, you know, they weren't getting bullied by them. They were keeping up. They were pushing back. If you want to talk fights, Adam McQuaid's a tough guy, and Mark Fraser, I think, handled them pretty good. Andrew Ference lays a decent hit. Corbin and Holzer lays a decent hit. And then Johnny Boychuk, holy smokes, bomb doors on James Van Riemsdyk. That's why you keep your head up. Van Riemsdyk saw him coming, and it could have been a lot worse if he didn't. But when you do stand up to the Bruins, and you do kind of keep pace with them physically, you also get to notice that, hey, they're a pretty damn good team. Tyler Sagan, David Krejci, Patrice Bergeron, even, even a pesky guy like Marchand. No one's afraid of getting beaten up by those guys. Yet, they are some of Boston's most skilled forwards, and they are the ones who make you pay. And oh yeah, that Dan Ocharab fellow. The Bruins have variety. They bomb it from the point. They can score on the rush. They can score banging away in front. And they did all those things against the Leafs. And the Bruins are deep. And the Leafs' problem against the Bruin has been, well, when you shut down that top line, they got nothing. Well, Grabowski took a shot, goes off McClement, that's a goal. Kadri, amazing setup from Clark MacArthur for another goal. When are they going to slow down? But the Bruins know, even though those guys are scoring, if we can hold them to two goals, we should be good. So when Matt Fratton and then a little later Joffrey Lupel come back, Hopefully the Leafs are an entirely different looking team. Well, okay, they're 15 and 10. So not entirely different, but uh, uh, better. Leave JVR, Bozak, Kessel together. That shutdown line's doing all right. Komarov, Kulam, and Grabowski. But then you got some questions with the third line. Fratton looked pretty good with Kadri before he got hurt. But then there's the matter of Joffrey Lupel coming back. And you can talk about those theoreticals all you want, but the likelihood of the Leafs having an entirely healthy lineup is pretty bad. So whoever gets hurt next, because it's going to happen, you just plug one of those guys in that slot. So that's my theory on why the Leafs can't beat the Bruins. So question of the game, why can't the Leafs beat the Bruins? Is it something truly wrong with the team, or is it just they kind of have a boogeyman like the Leafs did with Buffalo for a long time? They need to get over this having one team in your division that you can't beat each season thing. And question number two, I'm starting to notice trade deadline stuff on TV and the internet. The, the fever, the whatever is in the air. Now because there's so many games every day and it's still pretty far away, I'm kind of ignoring it for now. Are you kind of ignoring it too or are you all in? You can't wait for the deadline. It's early April. I'm more interested to see where the Leafs are going to even be. As always, in the underbar, post game blog, got a lot of key stats and details that I think you guys are going to really like. And thank you for watching.